Hi, this is David. <coughs> uh, this is the new caribou, Sir David, the Bard. Yeah, that sounds a lot shorter today. Did I leave something out? I don't know. I don't know. I'm having a, a senior day, perhaps. One of my people, a sweet person, has made many comments. She noticed that I was <laughs> off to the side <laughs> so I could show my lamp. And she said, basic, now I'm paraphrasing, this is not what she said, but she said, you stupid shit, just move the camera over. And I did! <laughs> Look at that, I'm in the middle. And my DI lamp is showing. <laughs> and you know what, I told you that lamp turns on and off by itself. And since I've had it on camera, the damn thing has never turned off. In my bedroom, it turned off and on all through the middle of the night. Alright, anyway. I had an experience of <laughs> my life. <laughs> my life. I don't know. Anyway, I came home the other uh, day. Now, you know, I live in Australia, and there's just kangaroos everywhere. The bastards. <laughs> they pee on the lawn. You ever king, uh, clean up kangaroo poo-poo? It sucks. It totally sucks. So, anyway... Um, I was coming up the staircase, and my uh, sweet little wife, and she's tiny, she's like 108 pounds, and um, she's 23 years younger than I am, uh, but she makes me 23 years younger than I am, too, so anyway, the lady down below us, which, which we, live, we live in a basement, so it's very hard for a lady to be below us. But maybe she came from hell. After I tell you this story, you're probably going to say, she did. She says to me, my uh, roof is leaking over my fireplace. I'm trying to be nice. Atheist, me, I have standards far, far above the Mormon church. Now, she's a Mormon. I'm not going to shun her. I'm not going to treat her like shit. I'm not going to walk away and look away and, you know, I'm not that way. I'm sorry. So anyway, um, my wife is standing there with the groceries and um, I said to the lady, well, um, what's the story? She says, well, I had uh, repaired once but now it's, it's leaking again over my fireplace and the roof uh, is starting to cave in. And I said, well, that's unusual in Australia. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> I said, well, I'll tell you what, do you want me to come in and take a look at it? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I, I, I'm doing some furniture moving, and I'm doing, I'm, I've got some mess, I, that's a hoarder. Hey, I have a master's degree. That lady's a pig in her own house. In her own house, she's a pig. She won't let anybody into it because she knows she's a pig. But as long as she's outside being a sweet little Mormon, no one knows she's a pig with emotional problems. I said, well, I said, I don't know how that can be leaking. I said, there's no water over on that side of the buildings at all. And, oh, it's coming from the rain. I said, they put a brand new roof on. How can that be? So we discussed it. And she was friendly, kind, and nice, and the whole thing. And so I went on up the uh, stairs. I got kids coming in. Allison? Oh, Abigail? Okay. Oh, Mercy. Oh, okay. Come on in my wife. She wrote a kangaroo home. <laughs> anyway, we come upstairs and uh, my sweet wife is always trying to help me. <laughs> I need a lot of help all the time. <laughs> and uh, I had bought over at DI. Again, <laughs> see every time I touch something over at DI, my life goes to shit. I should learn, but I'm addicted. I'm addicted, and I don't think there's any um, group therapy for DI. If there was, I'd be there. You want me to close the windows? <laughs> you know, she's... She never has looked at one of my videos. Not one! I don't care. So, we, I bought this um, medicine cabinet. It has a nice little beveled um, glass in it and everything. It's a pretty cute little thing. And it was kind of heavy. But I had a, a place to put it in my um, laundry room. Now, there's not a lot of people getting dressed up in my laundry room. But there was a hole in the wall that I cut. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. I was trying to save 
$6,000 on the air conditioner. So I bought one um, in uh, Home Depot and an air conditioner and I bought, brought it home and I cut a hole in the wall so that it could vent the hot air into the uh, laundry room and the cold air was supposed to come out uh, in the bathroom. <laughs> so, Did it work? No. <laughs> Did you freeze your ass off in the bathroom? Yes, you did. It didn't come into the rest. So anyway, long story short, I'm plugging this hole. And I've got this damn medicine cabinet up there. Now, I have a screw gun that plugs in that's electric. <laughs> well, you people, doesn't anyone have any standards <laughs> out there? And I had the screw in the screw gun, and I said to uh, uh, Mercy, I said, would you mind coming in and helping me lift that up on the wall? So uh, we tried to lift it up on the wall, <laughs> and I shot the screw gun into the um, uh, drywall, and I shot two screws in, and then uh, she went out, and I stood there, <laughs> and the son of a bitch came right off the wall, hit me in the head. I had a little mark up here for a while. <laughs> And I start yelling at the medicine cabinet. Now, I'm saying, you son of a bitch. You know, I'm going, uh, I work construction, so I have a pretty good uh, repertoire of construction phrases for that cabinet. And I'm yelling at it, and, and then I'm pulling it off the wall, and I put it down on the washer and dryer loudly, I'm sure. Now, I'm going to admit to you right now, you know, you know I don't lie. I'm going to admit to you, I can be a very loud person. I speak loud, and um, when I'm upset, I'm really loud. It, it scares people, and, you know, sometimes that's been to my advantage. Most of the time, it hasn't. <laughs> so, I'm yelling at this cabinet and going on and on and on, and pretty soon we hear the doorbell. That's unusual, so <laughs> we go over to the doorbell, and the lady that I was just trying to help and being kind to on the staircase is standing there at the door, and she says, there's abuse going on up here. I'm sitting on the couch. My wife answered the door. My wife didn't have ragged hair, and bleeding, and black eyes. And I think the lady was surprised. She says, you're abusing your children. <laughs> I said, well, you know, why are you coming to those conclusions? And she said, because I heard downstairs bad language. And I heard you yelling. I said, hmm. And I was yelling, and I do have a pretty good memory. The language was probably not pristine. <laughs> so she accused us of uh, abusing our children. And my wife said to her, said, you know, I've been in the kitchen, and he's been talking to the cabinet. Now, <laughs> you know, I'm bipolar, and inanimate objects can have a personality. And when they screw with me, <laughs> they're screwing with the wrong person. So the lady, you know, she's standing. Well, I know what abuse sounds like. And it's abuse. And I don't want to hear it anymore. Now, we've never had trouble with this lady before. So I said, well, let me tell you something. Would you like to come in and walk our house? Maybe there's abused children under the couches or under the beds, or they're back behind the walls <laughs> screaming for their lives. Nope. I said, well, let me tell you something. I said, I have two master's degrees, and they're in psychology, and when a person comes up like you and says those kinds of things to a stranger without any evidence other than hearing loud voices and banging, um, I have to say, as a psychologist, which I'm not a licensed psychologist, uh, as a social worker, that uh, I believe that you've been uh, abused. And loud words and banging triggers fear in you. And you think you have to come up here and accuse us, or accuse me, of uh, speaking like that and treating people that way. And I said, you didn't hear what the cabinet said to me, did you? <laughs> no. So, anyway, um, Mercy uh, eventually said to the lady, how could we be abusing our children? They're in school. They're not even in the house. I don't care. And so she left. I shut the door and left. Now, because I do this program, and because I have uh, professional credentials, etc., 
I've worked with children my whole life, my whole life since I was, you know, 21. Uh, I've been driving school bus and deaf kids and residential facilities and daycare centers, whatever. I've, I've been uh, passed <laughs> over <laughs> many times, but I have passed uh, investigations. I, am, I passed eight investigations in four different states in the United States that, that really, um, you know, scrutinize uh, do you belong around children. And then I just adopted my two girls in the Philippines, whatever it was, four or five years ago, and oh my God, the Philippines, it's much harder to adopt in the Philippines than it is in the United States. And I had to go through some psychological, and psych, uh, psych testing and interviews with the psychologist and whatever, and uh, I fooled his ass. <laughs> I got the kids. But anyway, what I'm saying here is this. I, I, I talked to my wife overnight and I said, well, here's my idea. And my idea was this. These Mormons that I live around, they will lie. They will lie. They will cheat. And they will steal. Now, here's what I think as a psychiatrist type of person. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm psycho. <laughs> I got a degree in psycho. <laughs> but anyway, here's my poor little wife struggling bringing shit up the staircase. And I'm just sitting there on my fat ass talking. And when we got done, I just went up and walked into the house. And this poor little girl, my wife, had to carry all that crap upstairs. And uh, my kids have to carry crap upstairs. Now, here's why. If you ask the questions, then you can make a reasonable determination what is going on. Um, you know, <laughs> there's a scar. Not long, I've had quad bypass surgery. And when I've seen my x-rays, there's a coat hanger wrapped around my, um, not my pubic bone, my, what's that bone called? Damn, <laughs> chest bone. Is that it? Uh, no. I can't remember. I know one of my people write in to say that's the bone. But they split that open with a saw, and then they had to, you know, wire it back together to make it grow together. If I lift anything, even my fat ass. My chest just hurts like hell. And the doctors have told me, don't lift anything. Don't lift anything. And I feel bad, you know, when people see me walking with my wife. I look like the Navajo warrior, you know, walking ten paces in front of her with nothing in my arms. And she's got two babies hanging around and three bags of groceries. No, we're not Navajos. So, anyway, she saw that. And that triggered shit in her marriage. So she's basically uh, single. My suspicion is uh, that she now uh, had an abusive relationship, and when I said, well, you're, you're extrapolating your experiences over the rest of the world, you obviously have been abused. No! No! I came from a good family! Now, see? She's a Mormon, and she's defending her family, but she didn't defend a relationship of marriage. So I'm, I'm sure that I'm right. So anyway, um, she sees that I don't carry anything for my poor wife, and she thought my wife was the cabinet, <laughs> and that I was speaking to my wife, and that I was abusing children in the house that weren't even in the house. <laughs> now, I can be pretty intimidating, I guess, but, you know, p people pretty much have to be in the house for me to intimidate anyone. You know, four miles off to the school, it's hard for me to sit here and intimidate my kids. But anyway, um, I thought, well... I better write a letter. These damn Mormons, they'll cluster together. They know the new caribou produces up there, and they know that uh, he's an apostate, and anything they can do, whether it's my car is unlicensed, or I don't have insurance, or that I'm uh, in the pool after hours, I don't give a shit what it is. These, uh, I, I can't say that word. It starts with an F. Mormons can be very dangerous. They can ruin your life because they will cluster in groups and go, see, he was accused of abuse before. That lady downstairs there accused him of abuse and now somebody else is called. That's evidence. See, that's evidence and it stacks up in this state if they don't like you. Well, I wrote to the HOA and I sent the, the letter to them and then I sent it to her. And uh, I told the HOA and her the exact same thing. I said she can be sued. There was a person out in the hall that heard her say that we were uh, involved in abuse up here, and that's slander. If it's true, then truth is a defense for liable and slander, but when she speaks it like that and someone hears it, so I threatened to sue her ass, 
And uh, I told her to shut her mouth, and I told her if she'd come up and knocked on the door and said, Hey, hey, there's a lot of noise going on up here. Is everything okay? We would have said, Oh, yeah, we're hanging a cabinet, and David gets excited. He used to work in construction, and if it's too loud, we're really sorry. Um, we'll make him sit down and get a glass of water and calm down. That would have solved the whole problem. But when a person that doesn't have the education, when a person doesn't have the experience, and the in person doesn't have the expertise and draws a conclusion. I mean, that's like a, a stranger walking up to you, doesn't know anything about you, and says, well, you know, I think you're borderline personality disorder. They don't have the education. They don't know you. And they didn't ask any questions. So my um, opinion on this situation is that if any person has come up, uh, we were a little noisy once uh, during Christmas. We had some kids over and they were jumping on the floor and uh, you know well she sort of lives below us in Australia here our our houses the lowest level has the house underneath of it like the lady from hell lives there so she was fine she came up and said hey it's a little noisy I said gee I'm sorry and we stopped the kids from jumping around on the floor uh, and causing her to be upset I guess but anyway um, I just wanted to say when you live with these Mormons around you in very close proximity they will gather together they will lie they will come up with their own conclusions without questions without education and without experience and then if you get a little social worker to come over to your house and uh, she's like most of the girls in Utah have been molested she's just looking she's just looking for someone to say yeah they're molesting over there so anyway, I wrote the letter, put it over to the association, and I hung a copy on her door. And now I have a video to say that, uh, you know, we were hanging a cabinet. And, um, you know, my bipolar, I don't have a lot of patience. And that cabinet was an asshole. <laughs> and I was an ass hat. <laughs> but you know what? It's hanging on the wall now. Who won that one? <laughs> Other than going to jail for abuse, uh, the cabinet is my servant now. So anyway, I just wanted to document and tell you what it's like to live in Utah. What it's like to live in Utah. Be careful. They do a lot of things without evidence, without questions. If you don't have garments, you're not in their ward. You're dog shit. It's a scary thing. Thanks.